Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about a little difference between a bowl gouge and a spindle gouge. There's not a whole lot of uh, information on that when I was when I or back when I started turning. So I thought we would kind of kind of go through it roughly this morning. So I just got these brand new Thompson Thompson steel. Got a half inch spindle gouge and a half inch bowl gouge, and of course they're mounted on my beautifully milled handles from custom Chris um, if you're looking for some nice handles these are these are these are great nice and heavy and keeps vibration down just beautifully turned anyway so the difference between a bowl gouge and a spindle gouge I'm hoping you can pick this up as you can see the flute on a spindle gouge is much wider than the flute on a bowl gouge. Now, the oil, I mean, that that's the difference. So if you pick up a, a chisel that's a really wide flute, you know that's a spindle gouge. These typically don't have, spindle gouges typically don't get sharpened with any kind of a wing. The wing would be this part here. That's nice and sharp. As you can see with the spindle gouge, it doesn't have a wing. It's pretty much, well it has a small curve, but it's pretty much a, pretty much a flat grind. Not as much as say your roughing spindle gouge, but still has a pretty flat grind. Now these are both typical, typical or standard grinds you can modify each of them depending on what you want. In the end, my spindle gouge will have just a just a slight wing on it, but nowhere near as much as the bowl gouge. Now, why are you asking? Do you need a, a wing or not? The wing on a bowl gouge, when you're when you're getting in deep to a bowl, the wing helps you rub your bevel. It also gives you an area up top to cut so you can cut multiple passes when you're turning your turning your tool cut all the way through where a spindle gouge if you were to to use it on a inside a bowl um, the chances of you getting a catch right here and destroying the bowl breaking a finger or breaking your tool is great do I recommend using a spindle gouge on a bowl absolutely not um, even when I even when I put my wing on there, just it's because the flute is so wide that when you're that when you're turning into your cut, you always have a really good possibility of of getting a a really nasty catch. Now, when you put a good this is my detail gouge, which needs to be sharpened, which is actually a spindle gouge with a long wing on it. And that's so I can get down deep. And this is also what I use to cut all my finials if you've seen those videos. But that's what happens when you put a big wing on a spindle gouge. Those are the basics of, or the differences between a spindle gouge, flute, and how it's sharpened versus a bowl gouge. More closed flute, smaller flute, and how it's sharpened. Gives you wings. Now I'm always, well not always, I'm often asked if I only had, if I had to spend the money on one really good tool, what would it be? And for me, I would get a bowl gouge. Half inch, five eighths. Um, bowl gouge you can use on anything, spindle work, bowls. I would, I would invest money in a really good bowl gouge. If I was to only, you know, could get, could get one tool. Or wanted to spend, spend a lot of money on one tool that you're going to get the most out of is a good quality bowl gouge. Um, also, spindle gouge. When you're doing a roughing, using a roughing spindle gouge, never use this on anything that is not a spindle. If you get this into in grain of a wood, um, you're absolutely going to catch, it's absolutely going to break your tool. 
and it's it's not a good thing. So the roughing gouge only only for spindle work. Okay. So I hope that kind of cleared some stuff up, and now you know the difference. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.